Hey guys, Lizardbolt here, and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to talk about how to game while on the road. And I'll show you my RV setup and how I power everything from my coffee pot to Starlink. Even while boondocking completely off the grid, here's how I stay connected and play games with people all over the world. So I turned the bunk above the cab in my RV into my little electronic center here, right? I got everything from my studio lights to the flight sim cockpit going on here. It all starts with the solar charge controller here taking power from the solar panels and feeding it to the RV's battery bank. From here I have a few of these 12 volt barrel connectors mounted around the vehicle. These are like your standard car charger plug. It's super handy having a few of these around. Alright, this here amazing doodad is the EcoFlow power station. It's basically a high capacity rechargeable battery that acts as an inverter. This allows you to convert DC power into AC power like you use in your house. It even comes with a 12 volt car adapter to charge it. So I plug this into the system here and it's essentially always being topped off by the solar panels and battery bank. It's got 420 volt outlets and you can power anything up to 1600 watts. These here are perfect for charging my laptop, making a pot of coffee, or powering the Starlink, all at the same time. And over here it's got a bunch of USB charging ports including a high capacity USB-C plug. Of course these are perfect for keeping everything charged like my phone, my camera, VR headset, drone, iPad. And this way I don't need to carry a bunch of chargers around, just plug them in. And over here is the handy dandy Starlink router. Whenever I use it, I just pop the dish up onto the roof and plug it in. It's been working really good and I just love it. The only downside I've seen so far is it needs a clear view of the sky for it to work perfectly. For instance, the last time I camped, I had a bunch of trees overhead and the system kept complaining about all the obstructions. But to be honest, it still worked pretty good, especially when I was just watching YouTube videos and stuff. So looky here, I took my entire flight simulator home cockpit and mounted all of it to this old shelf. Now I've got my X52 Pro HOTUS, the Logitech switch panel, radio stack, the autopilot panels, all in this one handy portable unit. I bundled all the cords into this one long snake and then plugged them all into this USB hub. So now we just have one plug to plug in. Neat. Alrighty, it is almost time for my weekly group flight with my buddies over at msflights.net. Let's get everything all set up and take a beautiful flight around some castles in Germany. And just like that, look at we got ourselves a nice little portable two monitor flight simulator setup going on here. I'm using Space Desk to turn this old ass iPad into a second monitor. I use this for OBS Studios and Discord. I also like to drag my GPS monitor over here so I can always keep an eye on the map. All right, the gang's all here and ready to roll. I really like flying this little bonanza around, especially when we're checking out points of interest. You're probably not gonna wanna use this thing in the mountains or anything. You'd be much better off flying something like a Baron if you need a good climb rate. But this bonanza is the perfect speed and has a nice tight turn radius for doing some great sightseeing. This year is probably going to be one of our last group flights in this version of the flight simulator. The new 2024 version just launched and we're going to be switching over to that sooner or later. Yeah, I know, there's a lot of people complaining that the game didn't have a smooth launch and that the servers are all massively overloaded. But serious guys, when was the last time you seen a major title like this release and everything went perfectly smooth, right? That just doesn't happen. Remember back when FS 2020 first came out and a lot of people were calling it unplayable garbage and stuff, right? I just don't understand these people who are so overhyped about something that they immediately purchase the product within the first couple hours of its release and then give it a scathingly negative review without even playing it. Complaining about the servers being so overloaded they can't get in and play, zero stars, come on man. Just give it a little more time until everything gets sorted out and it's going to be amazing. And yeah, I know they should have waited a couple months before they released it, but it's way easier for us to just wait a couple months before we buy it, right? After all, how far can they keep pushing it? It's called 24. And there's no better way to fix some complicated piece of software than to have a million different people break it in a million different ways, right? This'll tighten it up way quicker than just hanging on to it for another couple months. 
One of the things I'm looking forward to testing in the new FS24 is how it streams all the world data on the fly and just how well that works with Starlink. I'm sure Starlink has enough bandwidth to keep up with it, but I'm more interested in just how much data is being used by the hour. That's pretty important stuff when you're boondocking, and I can't wait to check it out. Here we are, this nice little grass strip here. Looks like a good place to park for a minute. I am pretty happy with my little portable boondocking flight simulator set up here. It's completely wireless and you can fly from anywhere, indoors or outdoors. Even with no power coming into the system, it'll run my laptop and Starlink router for about 7 hours. And then when you plug it into the solar panels and the RV's battery banks, it's pretty much unlimited. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye now!